Hello everyone. Happy New Year to you and your family. It's uh, 2021 and uh, we'll uh, work hard uh, to make this year way better than uh, any of the previous years for our customers and you guys. So uh, we are doing 28th uh, of our online classes, um, broadcasting again from uh, Kagawa, Japan, our uh, headquarter. And uh, the topic we chose for today is uh, it's very one of the most important things that you know for our lives. That's uh, our health, right? And uh, during, especially during this pandemic, you know, like health is something that you know, a lot of people are concerned about. So we chose this topic to kick off the kick for this year. And uh, so let's get started. And um, so, but like for those of you like for probably attending this class for the first time and uh, or like, you know, for those of you like who don't know much about us, um, allow me to spend a few minutes explaining what we do. And uh, so we're a manufacturer of uh, noodle making machines and we've been this in business like 45 years. And so we basically uh, do uh, fresh noodles and you know we design noodle machines that are designed for um, restaurants and small uh, production for our fresh noodles and we also like providing um, noodle schools like training courses for over like 20 years actually on ramen and udon and soba noodles and um, we have customers using our machines and noodle machines in 61 countries and we have offices in Japan, um, Japan, including Tokyo, Osaka, and the other big cities. Um, we have uh, office in Seoul, Korea, Singapore, and Netherlands, United States, and we have partners in different countries. Um, we're basically a um, team of uh, noodle making experts that help our customers you know, succeed in business by, well, providing a training courses, you know, noodle recipes, um equipment or whatever they need to um, succeed in the business so that's that's uh pretty much what we do and um so along with like what we have what we've been doing like with the noodle school that you know we've done like for the past two decades um you know we, we like we started this conducting this uh, type of uh, free online courses classes and uh so today's topic like this is the first class we're doing this year and then the topic you chose for the for this is uh, very appropriate. So it's a noodle for health and wellness. Um, we're talking about how we can make noodles and noodle dishes that are great for one of the most important things in our lives. That's our health. And um, you know we should educate our customers about like what they eat and make it healthy and happy. And I think this is part of our jobs, right? And then this is what we should strive for as a food supplier and a restaurant. And uh, so we are talking about three types of noodles we take a great for health today. Um, first one is soba noodles and gluten-free noodles and healthy ingredients needed in noodles. And uh, my colleague just who just appeared like in the fir um, around the first, at the beginning, um, uh, she's going to make uh, gluten-free noodles in a noodle machine later from scratch. So please stay tuned that and uh, we'll cover uh, some of the noodles first but uh, for those of you who attended the last class most of you will be like some some reviews from the last class so we'll, we'll cover go over it like very briefly then we'll talk about gluten-free noodles and what types of gluten-free noodles are there and what's possible for us to make on our noodle machines lastly we'll talk about noodles with some health boosting ingredients needed into them it will show how some of these noodles can be made from scratch. Um, that, that's, that's going to be like a gluten-free noodles. Lastly, we'll present you with uh, some sample dishes in our kitchen. Um, so this is just a room where we sort of like shoot some um, videos. Uh, so we'll have to move physically to our kitchen to show you guys the dishes. Um, so, and please feel free to send us questions during the class in the comments. So we can happily answer them as much time as we can at the end of the class. So the first new two, two types of noodles are soba noodles and gluten-free noodles. And um, you know, the soba noodles can be made like with or without gluten. So soba, like which is buckwheat itself, like does not have any gluten. And um, 
but you know there are, there are different types of soba noodles and then you know, they can be made with or without glutenum. So glutenum works as a binding agent in forming flour into dough and then to noodle strands, right? And so basically ingredients without glutenum are difficult to make them into noodles because they do not bind together. And generally it is harder for our noodle machines to make gluten-free noodles than noodles with gluten, but it's possible with certain ingredients and production methods. So we can talk more about them like later when we actually make noodles on the machines later. Um, so let's start talking about soba noodles. So soba in Japanese means like just buckwheat, which is actually a grain like triangular shaped seed. And it's actually not related to wheat uh, despite its name. Because buckwheat itself does not have any gluten, it's difficult to form it into noodle shapes. Normally, we add wheat flour or other ingredients to buckwheat to make soba noodles. There are different grades of buckwheat flours depending on what part of buckwheat is used, how it is milled, the quality of buckwheat, etc. So buckwheat seeds are hulled and milled mainly using two methods, rolling milling and stone milling. Rolling milling provides bigger volume, milling volume, but because the milling speed is fast with some heat generated, in the process, uh, buckwheat meal on this method, I mean, mis this method, they tend to lose the moisture and flavors. Stone milling grinds buckwheat at a slow speed between the surface of the stone plates because it generates little heat. The flour retains the moisture and the distinctive aroma, but the output is very low. So the cost of this uh, buckwheat flour, like meal this way, this method uh, is very costly. It's very expensive flour. But it's definitely uh, better in quality. The buckwheat um, seed is first hulled, and resulting flowers go through a series of rollers to be milled to find a powder. At each set of rollers, the flour becomes finer and sifted through sheaves of certain sizes. Um, Ichibanko, which means first flour is white in color and rich in starch and powdery, it gives a bouncy texture to the dough, but makes it hard to form noodles only from it by itself. It does not give much um, buckwheat aroma or flavors. Nibanko, um, which means uh, second flour, gives superb buckwheat aroma and flavor, but rich in nutrition. The color is light yellow with a greenish tint. Many famous soba shops actually use this um, grade of flour because we can make, they can make um, soba noodles with great aroma, this flour. The flour obtained from the outer layer of the seed is called sambanko, the third flour, by grinding nibanko through another set of rollers. Sambanko gives a strong aroma and it has dark color, though it gives a lot of nutrition. The rich flavor content makes noodle texture a bit coarse and gives a flavor that some people may find a bit unpleasant. The flour taken from the core is called hanako, which is usually used for dusting. So the quality of deliciousness of soba largely depends on the distinct aroma of buckwheat. But the aroma molecules gradually disperse right in the air to concentration below the level we can sense over time. So after like after like them they mill them so in the flour. So this is the reason why noodle making artisans make soba noodles on three principles of fresh noodle making. So buckwheat flour needs to be freshly milled made to noodles and cooked and served as quickly as possible. We also um, usually freeze the buckwheat flour to keep the aroma from disappearing. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about like the buckwheat. Um, so like they, they are like a lot of the like, nutrients um, containing buckwheat. So, you know, we should um, we should understand these uh, nutrients, right? Like so that you know we can explain these nutrients, like in the health benefits to our customers, and um, especially we have to note that like there's a certain ingredients like certain nutrient called like lutein, and that this is type of polyphenol, and that's that's rich in buckwheat husks and seed coat, and that's something like we should um, explain to the customers, like you know, when we are serving like buckwheat soba noodles, and 
because uh, buckwheat does not have, have any gluten, which helps form noodles, we usually need it to blend it with ingredients we call binder. So these are commonly used binder ingredients for soba noodles. And we also use like wheat flour, but like it's not in there, this list. Mountain yam brings great flavors and noodle texture. A uh, mugwort is astringent, so it's usually mixed with baking soda to get the scams out, which is the source of the thing. And uh, they're usually chopped up and mashed and kneaded into dough or buckwheat flours. The funori are types of like uh, seaweeds that work as a strong binding agent, making noodles elastic and tasty. Um, the standard no soba noodles are usually made with like mix of buckwheat flour and wheat flours. And um, so which are usually high in protein content, right? And then they mix the uh, different ratios, depending on the type of soba noodles we want to make. Normally, um, because buckwheat costs more than wheat flour, the higher the ratio of buckwheat mix, flour mix, the more expensive the soba noodles. And so 100% buckwheat, juari soba, and then nihachi, or like 80 to 20 ratio uh, buckwheat to wheat, are considered high quality and some that usually have some that like high end soba shops. And our soba machines can make up to like 100% buckwheat soba noodles. And um, kind of going back, so like because like you know, buckwheat brings so much health benefits, right? So you, you should probably consider like blending buckwheat flowers into our noodles, even if you like we just serving like other types of noodles, for example, like pasta, like you know, ramen noodles. And you know, we, we should talk about the health benefits that buckwheat brings to our customers' health. And blending ratio of each in solid ingredients may depend on the qualities of each ingredients. Well, elements, like for example, like um, buckwheat aroma, like certain noodle texture, and how well goes with it, like soup and sauce that you, know, you, you are serving. And you know the to you know, what kind of like experience like you know you want to you want your customers to have. So that's the soba noodles. And gluten-free noodles are getting pretty popular like among people with um, celiac disease or those who are concerned about like their health, which they fear gluten will affect. Um, but I, I won't be like getting into like, you know, whether or not like gluten is bad for health, like how it affects our health or now uh, in this class. But like, I'll just talk about what types of gluten-free noodles out there and what may be possible. So first of all, like what kinds of gluten-free noodle uh, ingredients out there and then which, you know, we may consider using in production noodles. And of course, like major ones, right? Major ones, there are three types and rice. Right, and then uh, potatoes, and then uh, lentils. And well, there are different types of like rice, potato, lentils, like of each, you know, that we can think um, of like using as the primary ingredients for noodles. And like, you know, talking about rice, right? I mean, there are like, it's said to be like 40,000 different types of like rice breeds like cultivated in the world. And even in Japan, right? Just, just in only in Japan, there's more like in the bread, rice types, like brands being developed like every year, right? It's, it's kind of, yeah, it's phrased like every year. And, but the basic type probably come down to 20 of them, according to the Rice Association. Um, you, you can check the website for more details later. And so we need to select which type, maybe blend it would uh, bring up great texture, nutrition, and the, the health benefits our customers want. Um, so basically, like to make noodles out of rice, we need to mill it into powder form. And potato may be another source of gluten-free ingredients. You may think by using for noodles. Again, like there are, there are many types of potatoes, um, you know, in the world, and we're not talking about different types of potatoes today. Um, and we're talking about just uh, the potato starch. And th this type of like potato starch is actually is being used for a production of certain types of noodles, um, especially like in Asia, like especially like um, in China. Um, there are many types of like lentils and then there may be a few types of lentils like that we can consider using. And one of the famous ones that are actually used for noodles is um, mung beans. And these are small and 
um, green beans with like many health benefits. And you, you can Google it later for uh, the uh, number of health benefits this uh, type of like uh, beans bring. And noodles made from these beans, but like they may need to be processed into starch first. And other types of gluten-free ingredients we can think about using are like konyaku, like um, for those of you like who don't know what, what it is, like this like kind of corn kind of um, plant that that, um, that you know we, we can like make starch and like um, it's a it's a type of food that like you know um, or traditionally eaten in Japanese eaten in Japan and like in uh, Southeast Asia um, and it's uh, gluten free and then like fat free and it's very low in uh, uh, carbohydrates as well and tapioca starch and quinoa and uh, uh, of course, like other types of like grains, you know, that um, we, we uh, back wheat, of course. And when we, you know, when using like these ingredients to make noodles, all of them should be starch form, or, like powder form for easy operation. You also need to care about and make sure other components of the dishes, right? I mean, if you're a restaurant, for example, like soups, sauces and toppings are also gluten free. And so, you know, it's like gluten-free noodles, like gluten-free flour and gluten-free flour is like that made of like rice or like lentils, like or potatoes. And we may use like binder ingredients like tapioca starch and other things. And plus also like some kind of liquid, uh, water and other things like kind of, for example, like soy milk or something. Okay, and so we're talking about noodles with like health boosting ingredients needed into noodles. So we are thinking of this type of noodles using um, like, you know, like wheat flour, uh, buckwheat flour, or golden wheat flour, like as main uh, primary ingredients, and then needing some health boosting ingredients to bring out good nutrition in noodles. Examples like health um helpful thing ingredients we may want to use are like in this list, like we probably use like in the previous class, but like um, these are some like we could uh, think about using in the noodle, needing the noodles or like as a toppings, as part of like ingredients for the toppings. And, um, you know, but like we need to note here that like the essences of these ingredients get dissolved in the cooking water when we boil them, right? When we cook them. Um, so we may use them in powder form or like fresh forms, like for example, like, you know, you um, kind of process them like blender and make, make them into shreds, right? And then we, we need them in, to like mixing process. And so if you can use them like these ingredients in fresh forms, we may be able to like keep like more of the nutrients intact in the noodles after cooking. And, you know, I have to, I have to talk about like, well, customer like having like, so why are you here? Because it's like, you know, we are talking about like some of these like nutrients, like it's dissolved in cooking water, right? And so cooking water contain, you know, contain these in, uh, nutrients. So we have, we have, we have a customer like in Japan, like, and, and then so much, like you go to like eat at soba shop in Japan, right? After you finish your bowl, like, or zaru or soba noodles, they bring you a picture of soba yu, which is like just hot water used to cook your soba noodles. And so to capture and offer the nutrition value of uh, buckwheat to customers, right? Uh, soba shops like provide this soba yu because in you know, a good nutrition we talked about are dissolved in the cooking water. So customers drink it by diluting the soup with the soba yu, and give, this gives this gives them like satisfying and clean finish after the meal. So we may want to apply this the same customers for our unique noodles, well, uh, packed with like a good nutrition and offer our customers the boiling water for our after meal drink, the explanation about the health benefits of the drink. But of course, like we need to try them first to see if the drink tastes good and brings out uh, good benefits for our health. And so we can bring out good health benefits from our noodles 
you know, if you're a restaurant, like you should think about like what health benefits uh, components such as soups and toppings provide. And we should think about what kind of nutrients our customers are getting from the whole package. So our customers feel safe and content when they order from us. So we think it's very important for us to, as like food suppliers, right, for um, our local customers to understand nutrition benefits of eating beans we are putting into our dishes and noodles and explain them to our customers, right? And being healthy is one of the most important factors that keep us happy, right? So um, we think to like keep our customers healthy and educated about um, which food brings most benefits to health and being the informational source and provider of healthy foods to your customer is a great way to keep your customers loyal to your businesses. So let's keep studying and finding local ingredients that you can use for your noodle dishes to keep your customers healthy. So um, I think like, um, you know, I have uh, more actually of like slides for my lecture today, but like um, because of that we are making um, the gluten-free noodle today, um, kind of the time is of the essence here. So like, let's get started on the noodle making part. And uh, so Megumi is um, making gluten-free noodles today. And um, so the way we're making it is a bit, it's a bit similar to um, kind of the way like we make like um, some types of uh, the soba noodles. And um, so this is a, this is a rice flour. This is rice flour and then, um, so we'll, we'll uh, just put it into this uh, mixer, right? It's a, it's a 10 kilogram mixer. And uh, that means that you can mix up to 10 kilograms of uh, solid ingredients at a time. And uh, for like minimum batch, right? Minimum batch, it needs to be um, four, four kilograms of solid ingredients. So on top of solid ingredients, you're adding liquid, right? So um, you can you can probably get it get the uh, hydration ratio up to uh, 50 percent. So for example, like 10 kilograms of, you know, well, like 50% hydration ratio, like 10 kilograms of solid ingredients, that's five, five kilograms of like a liquid, right? So that's 15 kilograms of like um, dough you're getting out of uh, one batch of the mixing. And so what she's actually putting in is um, is uh, hot hot water. And she'll mix it for ten minutes. And uh, so the reason she she's adding like hot water is that like you know we want to. Um, want to gelatinize like some of the starch um, in the powder to to make it um, to make it viscous viscous so that um, those uh, these uh, flour like kind of like you know form into like kind of makes it like easier like to form into dough and you know makes it like easier to like stick together Uh, uh, so the reason we, um, you know, she like, she mixed it like just by, by itself, like that's just by the solid ingredients for one minute is that like, we wanted to want to make sure that like, you know, all the powder, like, you know, there's no like, for example, like chunks of like flowers, that chunks of those not there. Like, so we want to like break in, break them into like small pieces. Um, 
so like pottery and everything, right? And then we also wanted like um, put some air into the um, the flowers. This is just uh, all for like kind of uh, good good hydration, good hydration dough. So the purpose of um, mixing is to hydrate well. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so this uh, machine is called uh, Richman 1, Richman 1 machine. Um, and this particular model is for um, EU countries. So like it has the uh, C mark on it, C certification on it. So, you know, we, we can export it to European countries, uh, EU countries, with no problem. And um, this rich men, one well, like so rich, right? Like well, rich and men means, of course, like in Japanese, like that's noodles. Um, so don't, uh, yeah, be confused with that name being, um, you know, by uh, what 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 it literally sounds like. But uh, what she's doing right now is like we she's doing like making like rough sheet of dough first. Uh, sure, yes. Um, so recipe is basically uh, like rice flour and this stuff, this uh, like in the starch, right? Tapioca starch, right? And then uh, this hot water oil. and um, with a little bit of oil, like a vegetable oil. And so it's very clean, smooth uh, dough that you make um, through, uh, you know, just first uh, sheeting, first brown sheeting. And she's just kind of controlling a bit of like, you know, the uh, sheeting speed. So we want to first like, want to go slowly. So we want to um, apply the uh, good pressure into the dough, you know, to make it firm. So we want to go slow first. So basically this machine um, is only one model and that you can actually make up to around 100 portions of fresh noodles in one hour from scratch. And um, yeah, this is pretty good model like this C model, uh, C certified model. And we have, um, we have another model that's uh, for um, United States and Canada, where um, that other types of like safety standards are required. Um, so this is a C model. So you know, in European countries, like that's uh, that single phase, 230 volts and 50 hertz. So um, you know you can like if you, for example, like if you're like using this machine, in Germany, like you can just like plug it right into the regular socket, regular power socket at home and start, start making noodles there, like at your home, which, uh, yeah, which is, uh, which would be kind of like interesting. And what she's doing now is that like this, this process like called um, compounding process. So, you know, first, like we just made like rough sheet of dough, right? But like, you know, it's not really uh, firm, right? It's not really strong. So we want to make it stronger, right? By separating it and then combining through the roller. Like, so like we made like two separate sheets, right? Two sheets of, uh, two separate sheets, right? And then combine them, combine them through the roller to make it, to make it firm.
Yeah, so uh, we'll do this kind of process for um, other types of noodles. So like this, this, this like a noodle making process like on this machine kind of goes like kind of similarly for other types of noodles we make on this machine. You know, whether it's uh, ramen noodles or like, whether it's like uh, soba noodles or, you know, udon noodles or um, pasta, like pasta like spaghetti, like, you know, fettuccine, even like a lasagna sheet. And uh, we also make um, dumpling skins, gyoza skins on this machine. And so it's a, uh, it's for pretty versatile, yeah. It's pretty versatile, and um, it's yes, it's gluten free, and it's got a rice flour and um, tapioca starch, and water and oil. And I think I didn't get that second question. It's uh, it's gone now, so we'll. Uh, For restaurants only, only for rest well uh, some people use it for like kind of small production like uh, you know that they do like for like uh, local restaurants and like you know local supermarkets they some some of the customers actually use uh, some of the customers actually you know supermarkets for example like you know we have a customer in like Boston much um, just this state like United States and they use this machine for um yes but like um what's important here is that like you know when we when she separated the dough right i mean um what's important here is that like you know it's, it's to to make it even right to make it even when uh, sheeting them so just to separate it we don't yeah she can probably visually like you know seeing it like and see like maybe like kind of equally kind of equal amount of dough right on one side and the other side and but like what's important is that like well um to to make it even like or last right so you know if one time one side is longer you know she can make it even by like folding it to the roller so it, like it doesn't really matter yeah, so we have a customer like in Boston, right? And then their supermarket, actually, like kind of small supermarket, and um, it's a it's a Japanese grocery supermarket, and they use this machine to uh, make a variety of like fresh noodles, you know, ramen, udon, you name it, like you know, yakisoba noodle, like stir fry noodles, and uh, even like even some like a bao kind of um, dough, right? In this machine, and so it's a uh, and so like they, they sell them, they sell them like in the, the supermarket, right? And then they even like and make some noodles and like distribute them like to local supermarkets neighborhood. So um, yeah, so they, I think they are getting like enough bang out of this machine. And so it's uh, it's very uh, first that. And then some, some of our other customers like are, um, yeah, using this machine or like some other types of machines to, um, you know, um, well, for the production or like um, the noodle products that are like kind of kind of for the retail um, and uh, like, you know, that are like aimed for like a local um, kind of consumers, you know, local neighborhood like and um, what well, to be like distributed at like some supermarkets. So it's uh, yeah, so like it's not just a restaurant. Uh, it's not just for restaurants, but like production distribution like wholesale retail um yes yeah, so it's a, it's very kind of kind of like fun to um have it to like kind of like you know produce like kind of craft noodles that you own craft noodles and yeah yes um we actually have, um, yeah, so like, you know, I, we told you that like, you know, we we've, uh, we have a school, right? We have like, we provide like training courses on ramen, udon and soba. And we actually have like a soba school in our Tokyo office, at our Tokyo office. And then um, we, we do actually have like, 
you know, if you if you check out our website, where there's a kind of school like menu, menu, menu button, and underneath it, like you know, you may be able like, to find a, a page um, where we list like all these like textbooks, right? And then one one of the textbooks like is listed is uh, like soba soba book, and then um, yeah, that's a noodle making textbook like you know on soba noodles. And uh, yeah, it's like some, some of the health benefits of uh, soba noodles and buckwheat are kind of talked about there. And I, I think like buckwheat, buckwheat seeds like kind of consumed kind of worldwide, like, and then, you know, like people call them like, call it like kind of super food, right? Super food for its, uh, it's highly nutritional uh, values, right? But then, um, but like, Japanese, right? The how how Japanese eat uh, buckwheat seeds are like just mainly uh, in form of like in form of noodles, um, but but buckwheat itself is just you know just super food and like um, can be consumed like in different ways, and so it's a uh, yeah it's a, it's a great it's a great food and yeah it's like in France right they they make a pancake out of it right so that's yeah. That's great, and and it, it's got like so the the value of like maybe like soba is um so yes yeah, so like we've been we've been conducting like our school like training course like last year like you know um, summer times in Kagawa and then a few times in Tokyo but like. Yeah, Kakao being like really countryside and like, you know, having like maybe few cases of like, you know, infection, like maybe like in a day, right? But like Tokyo being like a really big city, right? Uh, where, you know, um, we, we hear like, yeah, we heard that like maybe like over 2,000 people got infected today, like in Tokyo. So um, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty hard for us to, um, conduct a school right now um, in Tokyo, especially in Tokyo, right? Um, in, in Kagawa, maybe it's maybe possible, but like in Tokyo, that's kind of um, maybe it's a bit like responsible for us to like conduct school in Tokyo right now. So um, but like in Kagawa, that's possible, but like um, and we, we have another one like in Singapore, but like, you know, Singapore is just uh, country where, you know, a lot of people like fly into, right, from different countries and, uh, you know, it's practically like Singapore has been like kind of shut down, right, shut down for the country. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult for us to like conduct school there. So um, what we've been um, preparing for is uh, like e-learning courses, like that's an online courses that we are hoping to replace some of the uh, curriculum that we, you know, we do in the real courses. So that's, that's what we are preparing for. And then like, you know, hoping to launch the launch um, in, uh, in a few months. And uh, so we're, yeah, that's what we've been working for. What, that's what we've been working on. Yeah, so she's cutting it now. And then, um, so this machine, uh, Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so I we had a question like, um, can you supply like, hey, can you like uh, provide information on supplier yeah, for um, um, different grades of like uh, buckwheat, right? And that depends on like where 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 you want it, where you want this. So yes, um, depending on place, like it's possible for us to uh, just um, provide that information on the supplier. And yes. Uh, I think we can talk about later. And uh, she, she, she's just uh, kind of cutting it off like in the middle and then to make another uh, size of noodles. So just to finish this uh, part of the dough with this cutter, uh, that was like number 20 cutter, which means that like, that's 1.5 millimeter in width. And um, yeah, so depending on kind of size, 
and size of the noodles, you know, like noodle texture um, vary dramatically. So it's, uh, it's very important. The noodle size is very important. And so that you know, less hydration ratio, the harder. This is the number. This means that like three millimeter. And so that's well, like and wider, wider noodles. They told me like wider noodles. Sorry about the poor connection that we had on my uh, Wi-Fi here. Um, so, so basically, so she set the um, auto cutter that's like wider, and uh, so she's cutting it with the cutter. So it's gonna be like wider noodle, like kind of flat, flat noodles. And you can actually easily um, change the length of the noodles. Meaning, like, so, like, longer, longer the noodles, right? Longer the portion of noodles, um, the bigger the portion of noodle, right? Longer length, the bigger the portion. Shorter, um, smaller the portion size. Shorter, um, smaller the portion size. So you can. It's very easy to um, adjust the length um, with that with that volume. So this is gonna be like kind of flat noodles. Um, so maybe like great for um, kind of like maybe like dippy noodles or like kind of lighter lighter soup. All right, that's so that was. That was pretty easy and smooth, like, you know, to make um, gluten-free noodles, like on the ramen machine. Uh, it's Richmond one. Right. Okay. Um, so we can, we can move to our kitchen and then, um, you know, see uh, what our screen structures have. And um, so, uh, so that was Richmond one, and uh, we're moving actually out of this room to the kitchen. And um, so before we go, right, um, we, we I just wanna just touch a little, a little bit about like um, you know locations that we have like in Singapore, New York, and Amsterdam, and South Korea, uh, Seoul, Korea. And um, so it's during this pandemic, like it's been pretty hard, like for us to like kind of, you know, physically go to these places and like do demos and like kind of these kind of events. But, you know, um, because like we, you know, it's, it's possible, it may be possible for us to like um, make um, like noodles available to you guys. Like if you happen to be, uh, happen to live nearby these places. So if you're interested in, um, please uh, feel free to, uh, let us know and uh, we'll be more than happy to um, provide you guys with like you know, private demos the machines like you know kind of remotely from here if you're interested in um, so you know feel free to let us know um, yes yeah, so let's go to the to, to our kitchen <laughs> yeah so this is a showroom we have got all these like noodle machines we have right and um, it's like uh, a lot of uh, people like are kind of working on different things, different things, right? And right, so here we are, our kitchen, and 
This is uh, where we uh, conduct our uh, noodle school, uh, ramen, uh, udon school in Kagawa, right? And then, um, so we have like a different different equipment. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's like these are like kind of induction cookers, you know, big ones, like, you know, like strong, like a high powered induction cookers. And these are, these allow us to be able to like cook uh, such, you know, stocks as like kind of, you know, uh, tonkotsu, like kind of high density, like tonkotsu broth. And each of these pots will be like cooking during the class, right? Each of these pots will be cooking like in different ingredients, you know, each, each cooking in different ingredients. Like for example, like, you know, this pot is cooking like whole chicken, like, you know, rich kind of high density whole chicken. Um, this part is cooking like low, light tasty uh, chicken carcass broth, right? And that one may be like cooking like, you know, pork bone broth, like with that like pork head in it. Uh, so each part is cooking like different things, right? So that students can taste how each of them like tastes, right? Like what they taste like, right? So that when they put them together, um, they can um, they can know uh, what each of them tastes like, right? And they'll apply like different ratios and blend them at the different ratios. And then um, we're gonna be cooking um, like 30 or 40 different types of like a tare, like, you know, base sauces, so, you know, show you uh, salt, like different sauces, right? And then uh, oils, right? Flavored oils. Um, so these are three components for the ramen soup, right? Um, and each of the students um, has his or her own like ideas for like what kind of ramen they want to do, right? So um, you know, it's it's uh, like very interesting. Like you know, it's uh, there are a lot of like components that they can play around. Um, so that you know, we we ask them uh, first, right? Before they come, we ask them like what kind of ramen dish or like udon dish that they want to do, right? And then so we prepare all the ingredients that they would need to uh, make those dishes. And um, of course, like we have like basic recipes, right? And, uh, but like, you know, we have like database of like um, these soups, toppings and like noodles, right? That's accumulated over like, you know, the past 20 years. And so it's a lot of information that, um, you know, you can start with uh, when you come to the school. And um, as I said, like, you know, we're, uh, putting these all this information into um, courses like online courses we're preparing right so um, yeah we're hoping to be able to, like kind of you know inform you guys soon and uh, let me introduce our one of our instructors uh, Thomas uh, Mr. Takeuchi he's uh, he's coming along in Vancouver BC Canada and uh, I like to have him like this like he speaks perfect English so um, and then he, he's gonna teach us like he's gonna show us like some um, um, noodle dishes that are like for health, like for good health. Okay, I'll pass it to Thomas. Hey, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for watching and Happy New Year's. Uh, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And today, the topic is healthy noodle dishes. Uh, the reason is because uh, many people are looking for healthy meal options because of the holiday season uh, to make up for all the good food you had during the holiday season. Um, so we're going to introduce you guys two different uh, healthier noodle dishes. First one is Nagasaki Champong. So this one is a regional cuisine of uh, Nagasaki, Japan. So it's known for that variety of topping ingredients that's um, stir fried and simmered in ramen soup and is topped on ramen noodles. And some of the topping ingredients are pork belly, prawns, uh, cuttlefish, cabbage, bean sprouts, chives, carrots. So yeah, the, all, all sorts of ingredients are used for, as a, a topping. So it's a very balanced meal and it's one of the healthier ramen options out there in the market. Okay, so that's one, Nagasaki Champong. And the second one is gluten-free vegan pad thai. So first of all, pad thai is a stir-fried Thai noodle dish. And it's known for that sweet, savory, and sour taste. And we're going to make this with the gluten-free rice noodles that we just made with the Richmond machine. And we're going to make it vegan. 
Okay, so let's get going. Let's start off from making the Nagasaki champon first. Okay, so let's go over here. Let me just take, talk about the ingredients. So for the Nagasaki champon, we're going to use, first of all, pork stock. And as a topping, we have prawn, pork belly, fish cake. And for the vegetables, we have cabbage, uh, bean sprouts, carrots, chives, and some minced garlic. And so this is for one portion. So that's a lot of vegetables and a uh, good source of protein. So it's a very healthy ramen option. And for the noodles, we have the spinach powder mixed in noodle. Dough, uh, noodle. So this is going to cut down on, cut down a little bit on the carbs, and also it's going to give um, a little bit more nutrients, uh, vitamins, and minerals. Okay, so let's get going. So first thing we want to do is prepare the soup and the ingredients, topping. So heat up the pan. We're going to put a little bit of this uh, lard, pork fat. And first, you want to stir fry the protein ingredients. So pork belly and prawn. Sorry, fish cake as well. Okay. And once the protein ingredients are half cooked, let's put in the vegetables. And just stir fry these until it's half cooked. And then we're going to pour in the ramen soup later. So this is good enough. So let's pour in one scoop of this ramen stock. By the way, this is pre-seasoned. So just like this, let's let it simmer to fully cook the ingredients. And also, we're going to extract some of the flavor into the stock too to make it uh, more flavorful. So let's just let this simmer and let's go over to the let's just wait for the boiling machine to uh, fully uh, to have like a rapid boil you have to make sure the noodle machine, uh, boiling machine is fully, rapidly boiling. And we're going to boil these for two minutes and a half, and then put the noodles into the bowl and pour in the soup and the topping.
So let's just uh, while we wait for that boiling machine to boil, let me just talk about the ingredients for the pad thai. So we're going to make it vegan. So for the protein, we're going to use fried tofu and carrots and red pepper and chives and bean sprouts. So once again, this is another great noodle dish where you can uh, intake a lot of vegetables. And for the sauce, we have this uh, vegan pad thai sauce. Okay, it's sweet, sour, and savory. And for the toppings, we have uh, cilantro, uh, crushed peanuts, thinly sliced chili pepper, and some lime as well. Sorry, it's taking a while for the boiling machine to boil. Oh. Let's talk about the noodles that we pre-made. So this is the spinach ramen noodles that I explained a little. Okay, so yeah, this one is the uh, buckwheat, so soba noodles that we made with the ramen machine. So this one is uh, half soba flour and half uh, wheat flour. And here's the uh, rice noodles that's uh, gluten free. And we made it in all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes. So here's a thin rice noodles, here's a flat one, and here's a little bit thicker version. We're going to use this for the pad thai. And for the spinach noodles, we made it for the Nagasaki champong. So for Nagasaki champong, the noodle is round. So usually uh, ramen noodles are usually square shaped or rectangular shape. But so this one is used a round cutter to make it um, round, just like spaghetti. Okay, so the boiling machine, it's almost there. Oh, so we have a question. Um, is okay. So is there a reason to use thicker noodles or is it just preference? I would say it's just preference, but I like to use thicker noodles for like stir fry noodles. So it gives that better bite to it. And, but like, um, like the question said, uh, it's uh, it's pretty much preference. Some people like it thinner noodles. Some people like it flat noodles, thicker noodles. It's just preference. But I like to use thicker noodles for the stir fry noodles. More questions. Okay. So we have another question. Is there a way to know how long to cook time for fresh noodles? Is it based off uh, thickness ingredients used, or is it just specific formula? 
I would say usually the boiling time depends on the thickness of the noodles. So, and it's through experience too. So pretty much, um, if it's like a noodle that I never boiled before, I'll just start boiling the noodles. And maybe like a minute later, I'll take a piece of that noodle and just taste check, uh, see how cooked it is. And so you have to kind of like check by actually boiling the noodles. For these, I would boil for two and a half. As you can see, it's nice and green because of the spinach. By the way, there's 5% uh, spinach powder mixed into this noodles. So the vegetable and the, all the ingredients are fully cooked. And some of the flavor is extracted into soup, so the soup tastes great too. And also the ingredients, since the ingredients are cooked in the soup, it's also, it's going to give some uh, seasons the uh, vegetables and the ingredients, the topping ingredients as well, so it's very flavorful. Uh, are the so another question? Are the noodles cooked al dente as uh, Italian cooking? Uh, yes, because usually um, ramen, like what we're making right now, it's served in soup. So while the noodle is getting ready, or um, while it's being served to the customer, it's gonna give it another minute or two in between. So you have to kind of cook it al dente, just right before it's perfectly cooked, so that when it's at in front of the customer, it's at the perfect uh, texture and the boiledness. Okay. So a noodle should be ready soon. And you want to fully, uh, you want to remove this, completely remove this uh, boiling water because that's going to dilute the soup. Okay, into the bowl. And first thing you want to do is just pour the soup in first and put the toppings in later. all the toppings in the middle. Try to make a mountain of the these toppings. And lastly, put some thinly sliced leek. On top, okay. so this is how to make Nagasaki champon. As you can see, there's a lot of vegetables and good source of protein, so it's a really, uh, it's a really uh, balanced meal compared to all the other types of ramen. So this is the first one. And the next one, we're going to be making pad thai. So I'll start boiling the noodles first.
And the cooking time should be around two minutes. And just like Japanese style yakisoba, Japanese style stir fry noodles, after you boil the noodles, you have to wash the noodles to uh, remove the starch around the noodles because that's going to cause, cause the stickiness. So wash and chill. And after you wash and chill, you have to coat the noodles with oil. And that's going to prevent the noodles from sticking back together. Okay, 30 more seconds. And for the oil, I'm just going to use vegetable oil. And after these are done, wash and make sure to change the water at least once. Uh, the first one is going to be a little bit too starchy. So wash, remove all the starch, change the water, make it into fresh, clean water, and uh, clean off the last bit of starch on the outside of the noodles. Okay, so the noodle goes into this uh, strainer. And remove all the starch around the noodle. As you can see, the water is kind of cloudy. This all the starch. So remove the water, change it to fresh, clean water. So now the water's pretty clear compared to the first one. Okay. So strain out the water and coat the noodles with oil. So, oh, so we have a question. The washing process is just for the gluten-free type of noodles? No, it's, we do this for every type of noodles, for regular ramen noodles. So when we make um, yakisoba out of um, so ramen noodles with some kansui, uh, we still we do this process, same process. Because most type of noodles, uh, they include starch, and the starch around the starch in the noodles will, like, come out when they're boiling and it's going to it's going to cause the noodles to become sticky on the outside so you have to remove all the starch on the outside of the noodles okay so the noodles are ready so the pan let's start stir frying the noodles First, uh, vegetable oil into the pan and put the fried tofu, carrots, and red bell pepper into the pan. So these will take longer to cook compared to bean sprouts and chives, so I put these in first. And as you can see, there's some color to the tofu, so I'm going to add in the bean sprouts and chives. These will cook quickly, so 
just a little bit. Good. And let's add in the noodles. And now let's add in the Pad Thai sauce. So I put in some uh, sweet chili sauce, soy sauce, uh, garlic, some vinegar into the sauce. And just stir fry until all these uh, moisture evaporates and the noodles are nicely um, seasoned. Okay, as you can see, all the moisture is evaporated and also the noodles are nicely seasoned. So let's just plate it, plate these uh, pad thai. And as a topping, I have some cilantro, fresh cilantro. In the middle, and also crushed peanuts. And some thinly sliced chili pepper. Gives nice color to the dish and put some lime on the side. So here's the gluten-free vegan pad thai. As you can see, it's a great dish. Um, you can, I can take a lot of vegetables uh, by um, seasoning it sweet and sour, the pad thai sauce. And you can have some protein with the tofu, so it's a very balanced meal as well. So both of these uh, noodle dishes, you can take a lot of vegetables, so it's a healthier noodle option that you can uh, serve at your restaurant. Okay, so that's about it from my side. So I'm going to pass it back to Akira. And um, so this was the first class for uh, 2021. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll make it way better. Um, you know, we, we'll make this year like way better for you guys this year and um, by working harder. And uh, let's, uh, yeah walk together and then, uh, you know, um, yeah, provide the uh, healthy noodle dishes to keep our customers healthy. And most importantly, uh, you guys need to stay healthy, right? Um, so thank you so much for watching and, and um, yeah, happy 2021.
and uh, I'll see you guys in the next class. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.